Hello friends and welcome to uh, Bine Nirmal and uh, in this video tutorial we will discuss about the amount of the ATP or the ATP production uh, from the glucose oxidation so uh, one molecule of the glucose becomes oxidized and this will produce the 30 molecules of the ATP but in which steps how many ATP molecule is actually produced and how we will calculate the total 38 ATP molecules which is produced from one molecules of the glucose right so uh, this is this calculation is very important and sometimes uh, the many questions can be asked from this region okay so uh, before going to uh, telling you about the ATP production from the glucose oxidation first of all you should know that the how glucose is oxidized okay so glucose actually this is the starting point of uh, of carbohydrate metabolism so this glucose undergoes the glycolysis process okay so this glucose undergoes the glycolysis process and which is usually occurred uh, inside the cytoplasm and so this will produce the pyruvic acid okay so this will produce pyruvic acid and this pyruvic acid also uh, goes to oxidation of the pyruvate so oxidation of pyruvate okay and by the oxidation of the pyruvate this pyruvic acid transform into the acetyl coa okay and this acetyl coa undergo the Krebs cycle so this will undergoes the Krebs cycle and this Krebs cycle produces a huge amount of the NADH and FADH2 and these process are actually very important when you will go uh, the ATP calculation uh, from the glucose okay and uh, there is a few basic concept uh, when you will calculate this uh, ATP uh, from the glucose right so first one is the uh, energy rich carrier molecule or the energy rich molecule that is the NADH and FADH2 or they are the actual the electron carrier chemiosmotic hypothesis suggests that the NADH and the FADH2 molecules are actually very important for ATP production and one NADH molecule actually open the three proton pump and this will actually uh, produce the three ATP okay and one FADH2 molecule actually open the two proton pump and this will produce the two ATP so one molecule of the of the NADH produce three molecules of the ATP and one molecule of the FADH2 FADH2 produce the two molecules of the ATP so these points are very very important okay this proved that the one NADH molecule, one NADH molecule produce three ATP, okay, and one FADH2 molecule, one FADH2 molecule produce the two molecules of the ATP, okay. Now, the calculation of the ATP show are uh, the steps. So first one is the steps and the production, production of reduced carrier. And here the NADH and FADH2 are the reduced carrier. So production of reduced carrier and the amount of ATP, amount of ATP and here the direct ATP synthesis and also the direct ATP synthesis, okay, or substrate level phosphorylation, okay. So first step is the glycolysis. So glycolysis is actually the process by which the glucose is transformed into the pyruvic acid. So this will produce uh, two molecules of the reduced carrier that is the two NADH molecule, right? Okay. And the next step is the Krebs cycle. Uh, next step is oxidation of pyruvate. Oxidation of pyruvate. Okay. So oxidation of pyruvate also produce the two molecules of NADH. So this will produce two molecules of NADH. And the last step is the Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle. Okay. Produce six molecules of NADH and two molecules of FADH2. Okay. 
By the process of glycolysis, two molecules of the NADH is produced and uh, this is the uh, reduced uh, uh, carrier actually or the electron carrier and the oxidation of pyruvate this will produce the two molecules of the NADH and the Krebs cycle produce the six molecules of NADH and uh, two molecules of the FADH2. Okay. And you all know that the, uh, you know, by the process of the electron transport system, the NADH and the FADH2 produce a huge amount of the ATP. Okay. So one molecule of the NADH produce the three molecules of the ATP and one molecule of the FADH2 produce the two molecules of the ATP. Okay. Molecule. So this will produce the 2 into 3 ATP. So this will produce the 6 ATP molecule by the process of electron transport system. And this will also produce the 6 ATP molecule. Okay. So this will produce the 6 ATP molecule and the 6 NADH produce 6 into 3 ATP and this will produce the 18 ATP molecule. Okay. And this 2 FADH2 produce the 2 ATP. So this will produce 4 ATP molecules. So total 6 and 6 12 and so by the process of uh, electron transport system and the most of the ATP, a huge amount of the ATP are actually produced by the process of electron transport system. A huge amount of the ATP is actually produced uh, from the reduced uh, electron carrier that is from the NADH and the FADH2. Okay. Next direct ATP synthesis and by the process of glycolysis, uh, the two molecules of the ATP are, produ are, are produced directly. So, this will produce the 2 ATP and uh, by the process and uh, by the oxidation of the pyruvate the no ATP molecule is produced directly and by the process of the Krebs cycle this will produce the two molecules of the GTP. Actually the GTP the two molecules of the GTP can be regarded as the uh, two molecules of the ATP because very soon these GTP molecules comes in the cytosol cytosol and by the action of the nucleoside reductase kinase by the action of the enzyme nucleoside reductase kinase okay and this will be transformed into the ATP show this is uh, usually regarded as that of the ATP and so uh, the, the amount of the ATP which is produced uh, directly during the time of oxidation of the glucose this is the 4 ATP okay so total amount of the ATP by the glucose oxidation is 38 so this is the 38 molecules of the ATP by one molecule by oxidation of the one molecule of the glucose okay so this is the actual ATP calculation okay and here I can tell you that uh, the glucose is not only the source of uh, uh, ATP in our body also the lipids and the fats and the proteins are also uh, important uh, source uh, 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 of the ATP in our body and you all know that the ATP is actually very important in our body okay so lipids and fats actually undergoes the beta oxidation of the fatty acid and this will be transformed into the acetyl CoA and this acetyl CoA enters into the Krebs cycle okay and you all know that the polysaccharide can be transformed into the glucose okay and this glucose can be transformed into the pyruvate uh, by the process of oxidation of the pyruvate uh, by the process of glycolysis not oxidation of the pyruvate and this pyruvate undergoes the uh, oxidation of the pyruvate and this will produce the uh, acetyl CoA and this acetyl CoA enters into the Krebs cycle okay and the all of the molecules that is the lipids and the fats and the also the proteins also enters into the Krebs cycle and this will produce uh, um, 22 and the huge amount of the ATP that is the 18 ATP, 4 ATP, 2 GTP. So, Krebs cycle is actually the heart of the metabolism. Okay, so lipids and fats will be transformed into the uh, beta oxidation uh, and transformed into the fatty acid, and uh, this undergoes the beta oxidation. And by the process of beta oxidation, acetyl CoA is formed, and this acetyl CoA enters into the Krebs cycle. And the proteins can be transformed into the amino acid, and by the process of deamination, the ammonia is produced, and also uh, these actually produce the acid and this enters into the Krebs cycle okay so glucose is not only the source of the ATP in our body also the lipids and the proteins also uh, produce the ATP okay and this will produce ATP via the Krebs cycle right okay so in this video tutorial you have learned that the how many ATP is actually produced in every steps of the glucose oxidation and by the process of the glycolysis the net ATP production is 8 
okay and by the process of oxidation of the pyruvate the net atp production is six molecules of the atp and by the process of the krebs cycle the net atp production is 18 plus 4 22 and plus 2 so 24 uh, molecules of the atp that is actually produced by the process of krebs cycle right